a hip hop themed cookie store is facing some backlash because the local community thinks the baker is using the drug references. Um, you know, now she is a white lady. Let's let's watch that. Let's let's listen. Pop cookie shop is creating a buzz. Yeah, it's called the hip hop cookie shop in plan. But not in a good way. I to me, it's got Sandoval takes us into this cookie shop and takes a deep dive and tells us why the business is in hot water. Cookie plugs opening week. Yeah, it's called cookie plug. The cookie plug. Was anything but sweet with some Hoosiers calling their marketing strategy racist or misappropriating black culture. Those comments are hurtful. That's the owner, y'all. Y'all see Becky Sue? Becky Sue opened up a store, a cookie store, called the Cookie Plug. And the theme of said store is a lot of drug stuff and you know quote unquote hip hop black stuff okay y'all think becky sue has the right to do this oh so i'm not even watching it doreen waters and her husband michael opened up a cookie shop on mass avenue it's a california franchise called cookie plug ciao it has graffiti on the walls I don't think I've ever even seen a white person put up graffiti in the in, in nothing. Hip hop references and purple drink, which we know is for lean. Phrases and slang usually associated with drugs. We selling cookies. That's all we're doing. But nice and thick. The details are there from boxes with money and references like thank you for supporting your neighborhood dough dealer. Cookie. Thank you for supporting your neighborhood dough dealer. No, what? He's called fatties and a drink called purple drink. I mean, I grew up during this time and I, I never have done drugs. Purple drink is just that. It's a purple drink. Now, y'all think Betty Sue and her husband, Billy Bob, is, you know, I, I don't, I've never done drugs. Never. You know, I'm just baking cookies. You know, what's a purple drink in my purple hair? I have no idea why you know. It's lemonade. But she looked like she lying. Child, not it was all the dream. That is Biggie. Who, first of all, what black person did you hire to do this shit? But for people who grew up with hip hop culture, Purple Drink was a reference to a deadly drug mix some rappers would drink. When the franchisee is not aware of what these uh, ter what the terminology is dealing with, and to be honest, tropes that are used to, as gimmicks to sell people lemonade and sell children lemonade, that is absolutely a problem. In hip hop, is y'all going to the cookie stand to get some cookies? The frame and get a drug and so far. Um, from some Mexicans, you know, uh, from some Mexicans, uh, that's all over Cali. No drugs is in it. I asked, looking at the cookie shop, you would think it's something in it. I didn't try the drink, but the cookies are good. But well, that's good. The cookies is good. Okay. Um, nap, is it what's nap time? But I agree. Is for me, it's for sure cultural appropriation because even if. The, the cookie stuff, even if it has nothing drug related in it, the packaging, the promotion of it all, the marketing is. Becky Sue is not going to the neighborhood white folks community center with the kids and say, hey, y'all want some purple drink? They're not doing that. that they just not. Because they're like, what do you mean? Cultural appropriation. Y'all, tell Becky Sue to get out of my damn face. Okay, Becky Sue, go somewhere with this. We don't need you here. We don't. You can open a cookie shop and then not have nothing to do with drug related terms and and um and nicknames. And we can't act like we don't see what it is. At least I can't. Not today. Not ever. Um. So let's hope Becky Sue learns a lesson. Um. A black mama. Hey, a black mother is stuck in Turks and Caicos. Okay. Because she accidentally traveled with ammunition in her buffer bag and could face a minimum of 12 years in prison. Now, the 
The same way that we feel like you have to not travel with drugs. You got to be careful. Empty out your stuff. You should not travel with ammunition. Okay. Now, Miss Ma'am said that the duffel bag that she carried on this trip, she normally uses it for storing her gun and her bullets. Now, ma'am, if that's your gun bag, leave that bag at home. You should never, ever, 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 ever use your gun storage bag for a traveling bag. Okay, why? Because of stuff like this. Now, I'm not saying lock her up and throw away the key. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is um, when we make these kind of mistakes, it's crazy to me. I would never think, yeah, the, the bag I usually carry my gun in, let me take the gun out and then put some stuff in it. No, because I'm like, what if a child, what if it's a bullet fragment powder? Nothing. I just do not want people being stupid and making these stupid mistakes, and then you end up getting held up a little bit, a little bit. So the mom and her daughters were being held in Turks and Caicos because, again, they, they got there because they said TSA only took her lotion and her body spray. They missed the fact that she had two bullets in the bag. But on her way trying to come back, they said, oh, no. Okay, you can't do it. Now, she was she, they, she spent three days in jail, um, was released on by, but she's awaiting to appear before a judge. Uh, so it's an apparent court date on July 5th. If convicted, if convicted, um, firearm and admission offenses on the island carry a minimum of 12 years. Why? Because she not here. She not here. Turks and Caicos, they have a, again, you have to know the laws when you travel and you have to know their laws. That's why you should never take your gun storing bag with you on the trip because you may forget what, a bullet or two. And different countries and different places have different rules. And then you, now you just fucked up somewhere else. And what we gonna do, Jesus? What's gonna happen? Now, do I feel like that lady should serve 12 years in jail? No, not at all. That's a lot. I also feel like, but that's why we can't be around here in other people's, people's places, countries, and wherever, because we are then at the will of their laws. I'm like, child, hopefully she is able to come home. Um, family loses. $15,000 dream food because the mama people out here posted the booking number on Facebook. And when the mama posted the booking number on Facebook, somebody took the information, went online, canceled them people's, <laughs> canceled them people's trip. And because the cancellation happened, you know, a couple of days before the trip, they could not get a refund. I said, somebody you don't like saw your post and was Pat T and said, oh, bitch, you want to go on a vacation? You want to spend 15000 on a vacation and you owe me $20? I am going to go and cancel the reservation. And the lady did not know about it. When they, when they, con no, what was it? Um, once she figured it out, they thought, oh, we're gonna still go because we didn't can't let me read it. Um, she did she did a whole a whole bunch of tickets. I I read it. Tiffany Banks, she had she and her family had planned a trip of over a year and had already paid art had already made the full payment. She was shocked to discover it was canceled because she got an email about the cancellation. Okay. Um, she tried to contact customer service and learned that the booking for the, the Excel. Presidential suit price at twelve thousand dollars was canceled online without her permission. They offered her two interior rooms as an alternative, but she said, mm, "No, that's inadequate. No, 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 no." And their pop the cancellation policy 
prevents refunds because it happened, you know, within 15 days before the after departure. Because that means they can't get somebody else to book those rooms. They the family still drove or traveled to Miami, hoping to resolve the issue there, but could not board the ship. Why? Because it was canceled. Stop posting shit online. <laughs> okay. Stop posting all your information online because all it takes is for somebody who don't like you or just, or just somebody petty to want to ruin your day. And you didn't plan a whole trip for your family and somebody canceled it. And now you just ass out in Miami. I'd be pissed. I would be because you out the money for one. Take out the money for one, and then you just ass out for two. But hopefully, Jesus is fixed. That hopefully, you know, whoever canceled it, they can, I don't know, call CSI, call CSI on it, get them on it, and they can figure out what happened. We have an update, okay? Because that happened here, you know, in Michigan or whatever. And I kept on, I was like, self, that sounds so dumb. Um, because why you why you at court with a whole suspended like that? Don't make no sense. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and not drive, okay? So let's listen to our WXYZ station here, okay? Video fallout after a man was seen driving during a virtual court hearing for driving on a suspended license. Today, Corey Harris talks about why he was behind the wheel, but he also says he should not have been charged in the first place. And seven now, not charged. I don't know about that, sir. The news reporter Kimberly Craig talked to Harris and checked into that suspension. After he was busted driving on a suspended license, Corey Harris had to report to the Washtenaw County Jail here. And today I asked him what everyone wants to know. What were you thinking? What was I thinking? I was, I was thinking about getting my uh, wife medical help. That's, that's what I was thinking. Corey Harris. Now, sir, when you pulled up, you told the judge that you was going to your doctor. You did not look like you was in any type of rush to get somebody else to the hospital. So it's weird. When someone said, I was trying to get my wife medical attention, why didn't you reschedule the court? Well, I would have said, hey, I'm driving my wife to the hospital right now. Just give me one little second. That may have gave them an inkling it was an emergency. Harris said that's why he was behind the wheel earlier this month when he appeared before District Court Judge Cedric Simpson, who knew Harris was appearing on a charge of driving while license suspended. Mr. Harris, Hello? are you driving? Um, actually, I'm pulling into my doctor's office, actually. So, so I'll just give me one second. We spoke to Harris by phone today, and he said the doctor wanted to see his wife for some ongoing medical issues that had worsened, and he didn't think about anything but getting her there. You stationary? I'm pulling in right now at the second. Yes, I am. Corey Harris was cited for driving while license suspended in Pittsfield Township back in October. Again, so in October 2023, that's when he got a ticket for driving with no license. He said it was suspended for unpaid child support. Secretary of State records show his license was first suspended for child support back in 2010. It is 2023. So if back in 2010, or 2010, back in 2010, that is when the license was suspended for child, unpaid child support. That means that man owed a whole bunch of money. He can't drive right now again. 2010, and he got arrested. Not arrested. He got a ticket for not having a license in 2023. But Harris told us he thought his license had been reinstated. They were supposed to have been lifted in two two years ago, but they didn't. And according to the Saginaw County court records we found, Harris is right. So, okay, cool. Back in 2022, so, tw so for 12 years, the license was suspended in 2010. And then in 2022, the secretary says, okay, now you can get your license reinstated. It would no longer be suspended 12 years later. But still, what happened between 2022 and 2023? 
In January 2022, a judge rescinded that suspension on his license, but for some reason that information never got to the Secretary of State. You want to know why? Because Corey ass did not follow. Corey been driving. Look, can't nobody tell me Corey ain't been driving with no license since 2010. Can't nobody tell me that when that license was suspended back in 2010 that he just stopped driving around the city. Okay, he been driving with no license. He just ain't care, in my opinion. Where even as of today, his license is still listed as suspended. The same records the judge was going by. This is a driving with a license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. Failure to turn himself in will result in a bench warrant with no bond. Is now, I'm like, if you were to call your wife, she didn't have no, no, nothing to say about you letting me go to jail that day. I'm just confused. And my thing is this. That man license was suspended because he never made sure it was not suspended. Why? Because he kept driving. Even if the Secretary of State fucked up by not sending over whoever, the court, whoever, did not correctly reinstate his license, he also never made sure. Because when your license is suspended, you go get a new one. That man's license has been suspended since 2010. If he never went to the Secretary of State to get an actual license that was a license, he knew someone right. He just did not care. Why? Because he kept driving. It's very embarrassing. And with the um, type of ties that I have with with um, the church and, and the community, it's, it's very embarrassing. Now, I don't know what ties he has. I don't know this man. Thursday afternoon, Harris told us he was going to the Secretary of State's office to try to straighten out everything between them and friend of the court once and for all. You would have thought he would have done that a long time ago because, again, License suspended in 2010 was supposed to be reinstated in 2022. He got a ticket, and the 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 ticket was in girl, October of 2023. You ain't did shit from October until now. Because why he kept driving with no license. So even though it was technically a clerical error, he never made sure his license was reinstated. He just kept driving. The same way he kept driving, because he, he drove to court. When he got a ticket in 2023, and he never said, wait a minute, my license should be reinstated. He never went to, he never cared. Why? Because he kept driving. He kept driving. So this is what happened here. So here, if your license is suspended because you owe something, that other something has it canceled. Once they say, okay, whatever he owe has been paid, blah, 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 they have to reinstate his license. The Secretary of State is the only one that can reinstate the license. He never went down to the Secretary of State to confirm, oh, I have a license now. He just kept driving. So he got put over in October 2023, got a ticket. Why? Because it was never reinstated. And he never cared. Then he got to go to court. He did what? Drove around. Why? Because that man kept driving. Always double check be behind these workers because they will say that they will do something and they and they don't do it. If the secretary they told me in 2022 my license was, was, was no longer suspended, I need a new license. All he had was an ID. If they never sent you a license in two years, that means they don't have you as a, a valid driver's license. I need my license. I want my license. This ain't the judge's fault. It technically isn't even, it's no one's fault but his own because he just kept driving and didn't care. That's how he got the ticket. That's how he went back to court. Child. He is like, why, why? He never was. He, he never asked for proof. He never showed any proof. He just kept driving. And then, even the fact that on the court Zoom, he said, Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm driving to my doctor's office. He never said, I'm driving my wife to the doctor. He made it seem as if 
he had an appointment. And then when we talked to the news folks, he said, oh, no, I had to take my wife to the doctor. I'm like, sir, there was no urgency in your voice in that, in that car with the judge. Okay? So either way it go, they may are making up shit, in my opinion. Okay? I Thank you.